I'm Darren McGrady, the Royal Chef. We've reached over 25,000 subscribers. I can't thank you enough for subscribing. Your comments are incredible, and I promise that we do a Q&A at 25,000. You've left so many questions, we may have to split this into two or three different. But let's get started on a few of the questions. First question from Dusty Newman. Are there foods or ingredients the royal family dislike? The Queen doesn't like garlic, Dusty. We could never use it at Buckingham Palace. There's foods the Queen loves, though, and the royal family love, and it's all the produce off their estate, especially at Balmoral Castle. Second question. Trisonata, are you still a chef anywhere? I'd love to come and eat your food. I'd love to cook for you, too. I am a chef. I have a catering company in Dallas. It's called Eating Royally. Uh, we do events all over the country too, so maybe you can have an event and I'll come and cook for you. Fluffy, did anyone in the royal family have a favorite dish they like to eat during the holidays? If so, what was it? Was it delicious? I love your videos. Oh, thank you, Fluffy. Uh, the royal family, more of their tradition was probably Christmas and their favorite dishes was roast turkey. Here's a picture of it. Adam. Hey Darren, how'd you get into cooking and what ignited your passion to pursue it as a career? I got into cooking uh, probably through my mother. Uh, she was a chef and she taught me to cook. And I think that my passion to pursue it, uh, I, I just love food, I love being in the kitchen, I love finding new ingredients, creating something, and, and then just starting all over again with something new. Hanay, I love your videos and your energy, Darren. Oh, thanks Hanay. Can you tell us about your personal comfort food? Oh, personal comfort food. I, I just love all foods. It depends what I'm in the mood for, honey. Depends what I feel like cooking. I don't really have sort of a favorite. Ember Adams, I love your videos. I cannot wait to see more. A question, do you plan on opening your own restaurant and what would you call it? Hmm. You know, I don't plan on opening a restaurant. I have my catering company. I love doing these videos. I write cookbooks. That's keeping me really busy right now. Uh, if I had a restaurant, I think I would call it Nanny Lambert's. That's my grandmother. Uh, imagine having an English restaurant, all of that British food and comfort food and, and calling it Nanny Lambert's after my grandma. Oh, that'd be nice. From Finn, which country's cuisine do you like the most? Finn, that's a tough one. You know, I host culinary trips and travel to countries all over the world and every new country I go to, there's a new ingredient and a new recipe. Claudia, what's the best steak for the grill? Also, what's your favorite meal? Ooh, Claudia, tough one. Ribeyes are fantastic on the grill. Tri-tip, that's a brilliant cut of meat. Uh, when you slice that, it's amazing. But for the chefs, and my favorite, hanger steak. I love hanger steak, marinated in soy, ginger, garlic, seared on the grill, served medium rare, absolutely amazing. Gatto, where were you born? What do you like of England and what don't you? And, uh, oh, going on, uh, what's your favorite dish? Uh, what do you think about Italian cuisine? Italian cuisine, my goodness, Gatto, I mean, what is there not to like about Italian cuisine? Prosciutto from Parma and Parmesan cheese, the syrupy balsamic from Modena and the San Marzano tomatoes from Naples. I've tried all of them on my culinary trips and I love them all. Kyle, are you going to write a recipe book? Do you already have one? I actually have two Kyle. I have Eating Royally and I have The Royal Chef at Home. I've put a link to The Royal Chef at Home in the description below. Jacqueline Cross, What's the number one dessert that you would love for your birthday? <laughs> or, or what's a dessert that you think never gets old? Hmm, favorite dessert for my birthday? Maybe a rhubarb crumble. It's a very traditional British dish. A dessert that never gets old? What about an English summer pudding? I need to do a video on that. It's so good and for this time of year, amazing. Nayam, what was the first ever dish you made as a kid and inspired you to become a chef? Hmm, I remember saying in one of my earlier videos, making jam tarts, I think that is probably one of the first things I made. Just pastry with some jam or jelly in the middle. But when they came out of the oven, you're supposed to let them cool down. Me, a young chef, culinary school, straight into my mouth, burnt the roof of my mouth. Oh, that was bad. Never do that one again. Khalid, how's your quarantine going? Oh, Khalid, same for everyone, eating more and 
cooking more. Uh, that's why I love doing these videos, cooking under quarantine. Check them out if you haven't seen them. Zuperion, what do you think of Greek food? I love Greek food. It's one of my favorites. I mean, I just love all countries' food and Greek food, definitely, absolutely. Nothing better than a souvlaki. Oh my gosh, I love those. Crossy. I always heard that the Queen loves Morecambe Bay potted shrimps. Is that true? If so, how would you serve them? Crossy, that's so true. The Queen does love Morecambe Bay potted shrimp. If you don't know what they are, they're little brown shrimp, uh, obviously, you know, harvested from Morecambe Bay, and they, they're, they're cooked and marinated in, in this secret spicy butter. And then when the queen, she would have it with warm toast. And then when you spread them onto the warm toast, the butter melts and all that flavor runs into the toast. And then you have the beautiful shrimp as well. You need to look them up, you need to try them. Matteo, what's your least favorite dish to cook? Uh, I think that's sushi. Not because I don't like it, but we're chefs. We cook things, right? <laughs> Jaden, what was the one dish everybody loved in Buckingham Palace? Jaden, I think that would be on a Friday. Everyone loved fish and chips. All of the staff, 300 staff at Buckingham Palace, all of the chefs would have fish and chips for lunch. But forget your tartar sauce and your ketchup and all of those things. We loved it with salad cream. Salad cream on those French fries, on those chips. If you've never had it before, try it. You'll be amazed, it's so good. If you don't know where to get it, there's a link in the description. Jade, I can't imagine anyone being anything but kind to you, chef. I've got two questions. Oh, thanks, Jade. Has the royal family ever given you a gift? If so, what? Princess Diana gave me a signed photograph. It's my keepsake, love it to bits. It's in a frame in my office. She also gave me these amazing cufflinks. Do the staff live on site or go home every day? When I worked at the palace, all of the footmen, the chefs, the housemaids lived right up on the top floor at Buckingham Palace. But nowadays, they're all offices and all the staff live outside the palace. Co-company was cooking for the royal family, surprisingly different to previous cooking jobs you had. You know, I cooked at the Savoy in London, that's where I did my training, and uh, that's where I learned traditional French cuisine. But when I moved to Buckingham Palace, um, it was more uh, cooking dishes that the Queen liked. You could do a beef stroganoff, and if she didn't like paprika in there, then suddenly beef stroganoff became a dish that didn't have paprika in. You know, you were just cooking for that one person, whereas in a hotel, um, you're cooking your food for all the different clients coming in. Water. Was there something special that always was made in the royal, for the royal family Halloween? Oh, water. I don't think so. The royal family never really celebrated Halloween, but they did live in a castle that was built in the 1100s, and there were ghosts there. How about that? <laughs> Lawrence, did you grow up cooking? Was there a particular person who inspired you to become a chef? Yeah, as I said, that was my mother. Uh, grow up cooking? No, I used to stand in the kitchen and watch my mum cook. It wasn't because I loved watching her cook, I think. It was more that, you know, there was food to taste when it came out of the oven. Sausage rolls and mince pies and coconut tarts. Mmm, so much good food. Um, who inspired you to become a chef? Yeah, that was my mum. Janita, when did you come to the USA? What did you think of our food when you first came here? Janita, when I first came here, I remember coming to Texas, to Dallas, Texas, and I remember going to a barbecue and there was a big piece of brisket on the table. And I said to the, the man behind the counter, that is the biggest piece of beef I think I've ever seen in my life. And I remember what he said, he looked at me and he said, why sir, we got one twice that size out the back. And it made me laugh, but ever since then, it was brisket. My gosh, cooking brisket, smoking that Texas barbecue, I love it. Gareth, what's your favorite dish of all time? You know, Gareth, that's like trying to choose your favorite child. I mean, you know, there's so much. I mean, when the summer comes, you know, I love going into sort of the lighter foods, the foods on the grill. Uh, during the fall, when we go into the braises, you know, those lamb shanks and short ribs. Uh, it's a tough one for me to answer on that one. Terry, 
Were you intimidated cooking for the royals? And was a dish ever served that wasn't right or not cooked? Terry, intimidated. Um, I didn't get to cook for the royals for the first, I don't know, few months. You had to cook for the staff and you didn't really cook for the royals until you perfected every single dish. And I guess then it just became routine. Um, was a dish served that wasn't right or not cooked? Terry, me cooking? Of course not. Everything was perfect. <laughs> Finally, Keto, it's not a question. You starting a channel is the best thing that happened to me in quarantine. Don't get me wrong, I got promoted and I got engaged, but nothing beats this. Oh, Keto, I've got goosebumps. Congratulations on the promotion. Congratulations on getting engaged. And thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. And everybody, stay subscribing. More Q&A later. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe and I'll do another Q&A.